Okay, I admit I cheated a bit. Instead of making gears, I bought some. That doesn't mean that my gear making program on the Shaper is come to a halt. No, no, no. My gear making stuff is right here. But I needed gears that normally should work for here in my lathe. This one will come here on the spindle and these two I have to adapt to fit here so I can make different pitches on threads. So these two I will make later and this one when finished should look like this one. Of course that's not really possible and that's why I have this spacer ring with the, T slot, the key slot in it ready to go and this ring will come here. And I have to bore this out to the same radius as this one. But of course, as always, there's a little problem. When you buy cheap things online, they look hardened, but in fact it's black paint that's on it. So they cheat a bit. Now this one looks like black paint on it, but in fact it is hardened. I think I'm gonna install the thing here in the forge hall and give it a try. If it works, it works and if it's too hard, I have to anneal it. Right, indicator. That's a lot of play. Okay, let's see if it works. Something wrong with the drill bit, but I think it's a win. So maybe after all, it is black paint.
can clearly see that the drill is not very happy where this uh, set screw is it's not a set screw it's a hole for a set screw so this interrupted cut not really a success but it works Well, I didn't like that at all. Not really happy with this finish it leaves. I think that insert just doesn't like this interrupted cuts in this uh, set screw hole. Right, let's see what we have here. The spindle is 30 millimeters and I have here 30.05, a little bit over. So that should be normally a tight fit, but a fit anyway. Right. I'm gonna give it a little bit of touch with a sandpaper. Right, let's take it out. And give it a go. If you're a purist, don't look. I told you not to look. Try to take this key out. Oh, here it is. This ring goes on first. Perfect. This one without key slot, but I will make one. Uh huh. That feels like a hammer fit. When I put it on the wrong way, it works. And when I put it on the right way, it doesn't work. Five hundredths of a millimeter over 30. So this should be perfect. And the small side. Huh. The small side is bigger than the big side. Do I miss something here? I think I missed something here, because here, in this direction, it's smaller than in this direction. This is 90 degree turn, should be perfect. 90 degree turn again. Bit too small. 
I will give it a touch with sandpaper and make it fit. To make the slot here, the key slot in this one, it's a nice occasion to use my brand new fixture plate here. But before I do that, I think I'm gonna replace the cutting tool. This cutting tool used to be a drill bit. And now that it's getting shorter, the set screw in here starts to push in nothing here in this uh, little slot. My idea is to cut a little slice of this piece of high speed steel and then make this hole a little bit bigger or square or I don't know what and then put a slice of this one in here. That should be better. Okay, my brand new little cutting tool here. Let's install. Now I'm here. It should be maybe handy to make a flat spot here on top. So I can line out the cutting tool. Make sure it is uh, aligned with the table. I should do that one of these days, that should be easy. Or maybe do it now. To cut this little flat here I installed my old drill bit cutting tool. I don't want to mess up my beautiful brand new slotting tool to do this. Just a little part, that will be enough. I think it was a good idea. Now all I have to do is here my piece of paper to see better. Bring my tool down. And now I can see that it's perfectly in line with the table of the shaper. Let's install the workpiece. There are two holes for set screws in this gear thing. What I will do is make the slot exactly in one of these holes and then I hope that it will open up a bit after cutting so it will be easier to slide it on on the spindle. Sharpie mark here in the bottom. See better what's happening. It's hard to see with the glare of all this metal, but with a bit of luck you can see in the bottom 
that now my cutting tool is scratching a double line. Give it a little bit more. Here you go. So in theory this is perfectly in center. Now I created a flat in this radius. If I have the two lines it's not the zero point. Now I can set my real zero point. The total depth of cut will be 2 mm. I'm gonna give it a bit of juice. Come on juice. Yep. Chatter sounds. I don't know where the chatter comes from. Maybe I should s slow down. That's much better. Two millimeter. This should be it. I tried a little key in here. Easy peasy. That's good. Don't look. Don't look. Great! Let's make the other two. Same bore as this one for this one. Because I have to reduce the thickness of this gear. This is now, uh, I think, 25 or something. No, 20. 
I have to make it somewhere between 12 and 13. All gears thicknesses are different in this machine, so I don't really know. But that's not the point. I can't install it and grip on this side because I need to turn it off. So it will be that way. And if, just like me, you have only two hands, this is a really easy system to hold it a little bit in place before clamping. That's great. Now, to be good, I should protect this teeth here with a piece of copper or aluminium, but all I have is this very thin uh, pressure, pressure gauge, uh, I, I suppose. I will make some shims, things, protections, put them between here. All right, this should be good. Let's drill a hole in this thing. I got it. It's the drill bit is picking up these uh, holes here for the, the set screws. That's why it's dancing. Right, first I will work this face and drill after. I received a very nice little note from Neil from Nell's man cave and he made me this 3D printed name tag. It's like a sticker but hard. I think it is beautiful work and in a mail he let me know that he used his wife nail polish to hand paint it all. I think that's a dangerous game, but he survived. So Neil, thank you very much. This is really special to me. Now, what's nice is that Neil, a few and some time ago, he already sent me this optical center punch, which is really user friendly. So of course, there's a link to Neil's channel in the description. And I also received stickers from Kevin and a nice little note, Kevin from the Factotum's workshop. Kevin is the proud owner of a very beautiful little shaper and he's taking very well care of this machine. So go and have a look and secretly I fell a little bit in love with this little shaper. Go and have a look. and. Of course, also, link in description. Now that this face is cleaned up, you can just a little bit see here the remnants of this thread. Let's try it again. Yes, that's much better. I'm ready to start cutting the keyway 
in the second gear. And what I think I'm gonna do, I will bring you back when also this gear is finished. It's maybe a bit pointless to show three times exactly the same thing. Now, if you can leave it out, uh, I don't have any problem at all if you rewind the video and watch it again again. I would like to try to make a thread of metric 10, which has a pitch of 1.5 mm. According to my card here in, in the door, you can see, but trust me, it's here. I need a gear of 30 right here, which is already in place. 60, which is uh, still in place because it was here. And my brand new 40. And I think it's really satisfying if you make something and you see that it actually even works. Look at this. And I put this gear as a spacer. And then of course we immediately see that there's another problem. This 60 gear, and it is 60 it's marked here, is too small to connect these two. So even if I move the banjo, it will not do the trick. So I have to take it out. Out. Come on gear, get out. And hope that the 72 will do the trick. 72. Man, that's fiddly. I have no idea what they were thinking when they were designing this late with its really crappy system. I think it's obvious this won't work. There's not enough engagement here with these teeth. So, let's find another solution. And suddenly I remember that when I bought this lathe, it came with this bizarre looking thing with this little gear over here. Because someone installed the headstock of this machine higher than original, of course the distance between these gears is not correct anymore. So I reinstalled this piece here and now everything is okay. Of course, because there's one gear more, the direction is switched. So now I have to put it on left turn to turn right. Right? Right. Let's give this thing a try and see what happens. That seems to work. Oh yeah! Right, I made something and I took the time to install the stickers on the cheap door, so that's a good thing. Now, don't just 
love it when you make something and you find out that it really works.